people come up and say like, oh my God, I heard your song on this. Oh, you're the most played artist in six music at the moment. And then I'm like, okay, I can't afford my rent this month. Yeah. So I've had to Airbnb my flat out and I've been, I've been sofa surfing. Does that minimize my success? Fuck the Spotify numbers. Fuck the Instagram followers. Like, I really don't care if people don't like the music. I really don't care what I'm making, as long as it's authentic to what I am in that moment, then that's all that matters. I wasn't able to even hear any constructive criticism because it was my identity and that meant that yeah. I wasn't good enough. There has to be a time where you can be like, that's cool, but where can I get better? Because you can get better. There's something about like pushing myself and challenging myself that just excites me. A doing? year later. You right? Yeah, I'm good. Brave the coronavirus to come out to see me today. I know, that's that's how much I love you. It's reciprocated, trust oh, me. Thank you. And we even hugged when you came in because we're not scared. We're so, we're so brave. You know what, I'm, I'm like going through like from opposites of being like everyone's being totally dramatic mm. and everyone needs to chill the fuck out to being like really dramatic myself. Do you know what? It's like... It's, it's what I always, like, kind of secretly dream for, mm. dream of, is, like, the opportunity to self-isolate because I always want space. I'm, like, I'm always on this, like, endless search for space and I never seem to be able to find it for myself. And I'm always, like, if only I had space, then I could do this. If only I had the space, then I could do that. Um, and I, like, yearn for space so much. So... This is like space like no other, right? Because I there's like no guilt about not going to look see my parents or look after my parents or family because I don't want to make the mill. Mm. And um, like, yeah, I'm, my, all my plans are cancelled, so I can basically stay put. I'm quite, I'm like selfishly quite excited about it. Hopefully, a lot of people will feel that way. I think it's a yeah. it's a good time to pause, kind of have a look. Take yeah. stock, reflect, think about what's going on. I don't get any time ever to do that, do you? Yeah. Do you? Actually, isolation and silence, uh, not so much. And I do find myself craving it. And I do find myself to, in the little moments where I get it, realizing how necessary it is for me. Mm. Um, so no, I don't, I don't get it as much as I like to. I don't have a day off. I work every single day of the week. And I, yeah, I just like very rarely have any space to write on my own. Like even just space to write. And that's my job. Like, but I always feel like I'm 10 steps behind. And that is like the, my state of being at all times. And when I do, when I do have space or like create space for myself, something just like comes in. But I think maybe I'm just like really bad at prioritizing like, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's like distraction. Maybe it's like, I don't know. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm, maybe I'm like as terrified as of space as much as I yearn for it. Like, I don't know because I don't have it. <laughs> but ask me after coronavirus, <laughs> like isolation for a month. I'm like, I'm a, yeah, I'm quite excited about it. It's been a few years since we last spoke. Mm. So I'm, and in that time you've put out a ridiculously good album. Thanks, son. Just that there are no words for it. Yeah. You're so there, but you're so above it. Like, I, I can feel your control over it. Mm. Which I'm not saying that the first record didn't have that, but maybe you were in it more than you were in this one. It's, this one feels like you're floating above it, pulling the strings like some kind of wild goddess, like with this stage show going on beneath her. Yeah, just playing the marionettes and... <laughs> and and moving all of the parts around, it's, it's, it's thunderous, but also so delicate, which is it's, it's delicately thunderous, which I think is, it's obviously the hardest thing to do is to, to toe that line between the extremes. Yeah. Um, so congratulations, first Thank and you. foremost, for, Thank you. for, really for achieving that. that. So you. I'm interested to dig into what's been going on, what you've been learning, what you've been thinking what you've been uncovering about yourself and, and the world and your process 
Um, I mean, it's just fucking ongoing, isn't it? But we'll start at the... F- Am I allowed to swear? Yeah, of course you are. But we'll start at the same place that I start with everybody. Mm. What is art now to you four years since the last time you defined it for me? What is art? It's funny because I think like the my, my, my feelings of what art is is like being simplified every day. Um, the longer I do it. And actually I think that like it's less about like an identity now because I think it's really problematic when art becomes your identity. But I think it's just it's just like the purest of expressions as far as I'm concerned. You know, like I used to say like it's a therapy and like it is that, I guess. But actually I just think that it's just a... It's just like an it's an absolute like necessity because I often feel like giving it all up. Like more often than I sometimes think is healthy. Because I hate the industry. Mm. And like when I say I hate the industry, like it's it it pushes against everything that I love about music and art. Like and I I I like sometimes I feel just so overwhelmed by everything that the industry brings that I'm just like fuck this like I'm done like it's just not worth it and in that moment it feels like it's not worth it and then the next second I'm like you know I I couldn't give it up if I wanted to because it's like the purity of the actual process of making art or of having that output is just like something that's absolutely necessary and I can't Although it's not my identity, it I don't know how to exist without it. And so even in the moments that I'm like, I want to quit, I'm never wanting to quit music. Mm. I'm wanting to quit being an artist in this industry. Yeah, the bureaucracy and the, the politics. politics. Like, just like, it's, it's heavy. And it, I feel like it, it's the, so, it's not conducive to being satisfied in the moment or present in the moment. It's always to do with, like, over there. That's where you're going or that's where you're not. Those are the numbers that you need. Those are the, It's like it's just somewhere so far away from in the moment. And for me, the beauty of music is being in the moment. And that's why I love music creating music because you're so in the moment so is that the necessity the presence I yeah. need to feel present yeah I think it is yeah and oh. I don't feel very present a lot in my life like it's something that I'm always searching for which is what I was kind of saying about space mm. and uh, yearning for space like I yearn to like have space where I can be in the present so in my life I think the only times that I am really in the present is when I'm creating music in that moment I love the definition of art as an anchor mm. An art, an art is an anchor to the present moment. Mm. I really think that's quite a good definition, quite an apt definition anyway, mm. hearing you speak on it. There's also, is there a need to to understand? I guess they go hand in hand. Like this need to be present and in presence is understanding, is not the fear and the rationality of past or future projections, but the understanding that, you're, you're all right and you're mm. going to be all right regardless of if you don't impress those people or hit those yeah. numbers or get to where people tell you you need to be or if you decide or if you don't get enough space or if you do get enough space mm. like regardless of all of those external factors the presence allows you the, the, the knowledge of like you're, you're okay. I'm pretty good at getting into the space of like doesn't fucking matter mm. like all of that stuff doesn't matter I'm quite good at getting there, like, my kind of, my, like, pure art head is like, fuck that. Fuck the Spotify numbers, fuck the Instagram followers, like, I really don't care if people don't like the music. I really don't care, because what I'm making, as long as it's authentic to what I am in that moment, then that's all that matters. And, like, really, like, if you're making art that everybody loves or everybody likes, 
I'm not really interested in that. I'm interested in making something that some people love and some people hate. Like, I don't, it's, it's fine. Also, people voted for Boris Johnson, Brexit, and stockpiled toilet paper because of coronavirus. <laughs> so you can't really trust people. <laughs> no, people are mad. <laughs> people are wild. But um, so I like, I like also the idea that if you're an artist and you make something, or if you think you're an artist or you want to be an artist, mm. and you make something that allows you a window of presence, then that's all you need as a sign of validation. Yeah. If, if you can make something that brings you into the moment, like I actually listened to one of my songs the other day. Granted, I was quite high. It always helps but I like, thought to bring I was, you into the moment. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I thought I was going to fall over and I was sitting down. <laughs> yeah. Like, and I was like, oh, shit, I'm so... I'm so in it. I hadn't listened to it for a while, but I was like, I'm so present with it. It's moving me to the point of disorientating me. I don't know whether that's good or bad or whether it's like the song might be dissonant as fuck. Like, who knows what it was. It doesn't matter though, does it? It doesn't matter because it was was making me feel like I was about to fall over. Yeah. um, To the point of where I had to like open my eyes and kind of steady myself. How high were you? (laughs) I wasn't even that high, you know. (laughs) The music was making you higher, maybe. Yeah, and and then sometimes when I'm like, if I have a moment of doubt, I need to remember those moments. Mm. That moment of like, no, this ma- this did something to the chemistry of your body, to the to the orientation of yeah. your materials. Mm. You have to trust that. And yeah. and if someone doesn't get it, I don't know if it's it's not on you. No, it's on them. Yeah, to to let go of whatever is cluttering their space mm. and and give themselves over to it. Isn't as an artist, isn't your it's funny because lots of people might have like different idea of what an artist is or should or responsibility is. Mm. But I think as an artist, my responsibility for me, as I see it, is to be like real mm. and to be honest. And so I can stand by whatever I put out. And know that it was, I did my best in that moment. And if I started creating music that I thought my audience wanted to hear, then I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be being real. Because I'm like trying to be something that other people want you to be. Then it's like, isn't it? Like that, that's, that storyline never ends well. No, of course it doesn't. It just doesn't. And I think that it would be like incredibly confusing. And um, and then I think that your identity really gets like confused within like this thing that you're trying to be because you're trying to please that person and that person. Then it's like, well, who am I in all of that? The mm. one part that I don't really have a question in it is the music, mm. um, because I will always put everything into it. And I'm quite uncompromising in the way that if I don't like something, I just won't release it. Like I know. Yeah. <laughs> so, like musically, I'm proud as proud as hell. Mm. Like I've never, I'm, I'm like, I've always been real with myself, so I never question that side. But do I get sucked into like the numbers, the idea of what success is, like um, what? It means to be struggling to make the rent, like having to, like a year before last, I ran my advance ran out. I like had no fucking money, like no money. And I was like selling, selling equipment off that I actually needed. And I was like, okay, I'm, I've got to go back and work what I, what I was doing like five years previous. And that felt like a huge step back. I started teaching piano lessons again. I was nannying again. And and I was like being a art, full-time artist as well. And it was like the juggle was real. But even more than the juggle was like the processing of having, it felt like I'd taken 20 steps back mm. and it felt like I'd failed. I was like everything that I have worked so hard for, I've, I, it has not worked. I've failed. I can't afford to pay my rent. I can't, I, you know, I can't exist in London as an artist. And I've always said success is sustaining. 
and I can't sustain. So therefore, I am not successful and I'm a failure. I could I could quite easily sell out to make money. I mean, but I can't quite easily do it because I'm just me and I just can't. Yeah. So like, yeah, my advance was reduced because I refused to write a particular type of single. And my, I took time to write my second album because that's what I needed. And therefore I ran out of my money. Like, so actually it's kind of like, it was kind of in my control and I made choices because of the art I want to make. And that meant that I had to take kind of a step back and that meant like going back to do work that I didn't necessarily like feel happy about doing at that moment. But I'm really glad it happened. It's quite a mad idea for an artist, if, if we're going to speak about sincerity and truth, mm. to gauge your success by if you make money off of it. I guess like before when I would say like, you know, it's funny how you like, you say, you say these things until you believe them. Mm. That's what I find really interesting. <laughs> yeah. And then you have to like be like, do I believe that? Or is it just because I've been saying it for five years? And you have to like really reevaluate some things that you say. So my thing was always like, my idea of success is sustaining. And I think what I meant by that was I'm not doing this for numbers. Mm. Like, I don't, I never went into this with like, I want a record deal. I want to be famous. I want money. I want to play main stage Glastonbury. I want. I didn't have all of these things. My thing was like, I want to make good music, and that was kind of it. And I, I'm, like, I'm sure that some people think that that's like that dream is really small. <laughs> like in terms of some other people, really do want those things, and like I admire those people. But I think that when I said like sustaining, it was like being able to not compromise and continue to do this. Mm. And if you're looking at that, it like that, then yes, I am doing that. Like, I'm not having to compromise. I am continuing to do it. But I also think, like, in having to work all uh, these other jobs, it takes you away from doing what you need to be doing. So that's not, like, a goal of mine. Yeah. Is my, my goal is not to work four jobs and spread myself thin. It's not is to, like, to be a musician, It you need some space and you need to, like, be able to, you know, have some time to work shit out. And that's just not going to happen when you're, like, running between, like, teaching seven lessons in a day and then nannying and then going and doing a session till four in the morning. It's just not, it's yeah. not conducive to, like, it's not conducive to a healthy lifestyle. Yeah. But then it gets similar, it's... Similar on the other side of uh, the commitment, because then you spend three years on tour. Like you yeah. said, you're 10 days behind. You feel like you're 10 days behind where you need to be. Mm -hmm. So maybe the difference actually isn't like, and then how much time do you actually find for yourself or how much space do you find for yourself to have the level of presence with the music that you initially wanted? Mm. Like, what's the difference, really, apart from the fact that you're, everything you're doing is, is kind of building towards the music side, whereas, I guess, um, the teaching and working and editing videos or working in a coffee shop or whatever it may be mm. isn't really benefiting your musicianship. Although I do feel like it gave me... Um, like, I really wouldn't change having had to do that. Mm. Because it gave me perspective. Like, it made me so grateful for the times that I was able just to do music. Um, it made me not take things for granted in the way that I think that I probably was because I'd been privileged enough by that up to that point to just do music. And I think it actually made me a better musician because, or a better a better artist because it because my time went from like this to like this it was like when I did have the time I like used it effectively mm. instead of like procrastinating and kind of just taking that time for granted 
It's funny how like your time can be reduced by like ninety nine percent, but you still do the same amount. <laughs> yeah, the time that you do have. Do you find yeah. that still true now that your commitments are all music and Rosie Low based? Do you have that still? St- I mean, I still teach. Okay, I still teach. What um, l- what lucky students you must have. Uh, <laughs> they're very sweet students. Um, I do a lot of songwriting with them as well, which helps my songwriting in turn. Yeah, yeah. It reminds me why I'm doing it. Mm. And it's good to have that reminder. Um, but is the time? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think it's stayed. I think that I think that I'll never well, I might I might in the future, but I'd like like right now I really don't take it for granted. Like mm. I know that any moment I could that I might have to do that again. And it doesn't feel like a failure now. It feels like that's one of the choices that I've made from the art that I want to make. And that's absolutely fine. And actually, it's a real privilege to do music full time. And um, yeah, like I just don't, I don't really take it for granted. I don't, I don't see it as like as such a kind of singular, uh, singular vision now of like, that equals failure, that equals success. I just think that it's like a flow and it's like always moving and you always have to re-evaluate what it is that you want and what's important to you. And whilst my output of music and the art that I make is what it is, then I'm going to have to be open to doing some of that stuff and that's absolutely fine by me. Yeah, and at least it, it builds towards, at some point, having the resources to be able to stop everything for a little while and not do all of those things. Yeah. You know, sort of like a prince type thing. Mm. Get as much money or as much uh, attention or as much interest as you need to be able to go, all right, now you lot disappear or me disappear and then just get what you've always wanted, which is your time and your space with with the craft. I just don't feel like we get the opportunity to do that anymore. I just don't. I don't I don't think that artists have I mean you can make it, but I do think that you can make the space. But I do think that you've got to be in a little bit of a privileged position to be able to make the space in some mm. degrees. I don't think that there's we're just expected to be releasing music all the time. Yeah. And but that comes as as a result of musicians releasing music all the time. That expectation has been set because certain artists are willing to do that, yeah. are willing to sacrifice whatever it, uh, whatever integrity, I guess it is. Not, not necessarily integrity. They're willing to sacrifice whatever they need to sacrifice to be able to pump out work like a machine. Mm. So it's, That's kind of become the expectation. Yeah, it's become the, the curse. But yeah. it's a self-inflicted burden because it's it's... Doesn't give allow any space. Yeah, to... and we're doing it to ourselves because mm. people are churning out like this song after song after song or piece after piece after piece, mm. and and yeah, it's being encouraged by people who can make profit off of it, and it's probably also being. I don't th- necessarily think the audience is to blame because I think it's between the people who can make the work and profit from it, and the audience just get expectations by what they're given. The, the late they don't demand music over and over and over again. Like or, the problem or, is, it's the expectation now, and the only way the the only mm-hmm. where the only place that like artists are making money now. I'm talking about mu- musicians, mm. uh, performing artists, and I'm also talking about not the really big people. Yeah, I'm talking about like the rest of us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, is by being on tour. Yeah. And like everything's changing, I don't think anyone really knows where it's going to go. But right now, you always have to be in campaign to be making money. And when people aren't buying money, um, buying <laughs> when people aren't buying music, there isn't enough money to sustain you when you're not on tour. So this is why it's like, I think it will change. Like I think it's all like needs to just work itself out. But right now, like you do have to be in campaign all the time. Mm. And like that is tricky. It is tricky because you've got to be making like music very fast. You know, I was from my first album to my second album. It was like two years, three, eight, three, maybe three years from release. Or I was away 
once my campaign finished and I came back two years. I didn't think that that's long. But I just, I just don't. I think that, yeah, I took my time over that album because I needed to. If it had been any less than that, the album wouldn't have been as good. Like five months earlier, as the album is, is, had is, existed at that point, I hadn't written two of the three singles. Like, it's a process. It takes time. But all of my press after I came back was like, where have you been? And I'm like... Working. <laughs> two years is not a long time. Yeah. Like, it's just... It's just, like, in my head, it's not. Like, all my favourite albums, there's, like, ten years between those yeah. albums, you know? And good stuff takes time. And my worry is that while we're, like, churning, 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 the expectation to churn is, like, well, the quality just drops and drops and drops until, like, you just release something to stay in campaign. And it's, like, should our, shouldn't we be, like just trying to keep the bar, like, high. Yeah. And that's what we should be like. There's too much music anyway, let's be honest. Mm -hmm. There is too much music. Like, I've got, like, 20 albums right now <laughs> saved on Spotify that I'm probably never going to be able to listen to. Yeah. I just listened to fucking Jay-Z's 444. Jesus. On that's... the way here. All right. You're that far behind. I'm that far behind, <laughs> hun. I'm years behind. That's what I mean. Ten steps behind. Fucking 10,000 albums behind. It's too much. It is too much. It's something that I think the artists need to take control of. And even if that, that even if that's a, 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 a case of encouraging patience in the music itself and using that as a tool to kind of change the audience's mind. Yeah, but look, look the single's gone from, uh, you know, it's got to be under three minutes now. Like, even music's getting smaller, the songs are getting shorter. Yeah, I think Old Town introductions Road... Introductions are cut. My no, introductions are cut for Spotify. Old Town Road is, a, is 1 minute 55, the original. What's Old Town Road? It's, it was like, all right, you'll find out about it in about four years. Okay, but it yeah. was like the biggest single of the start of this year. By who? Uh, I don't... Little Nas X. It was okay. like some viral thing, like some TikTok shit. Okay. And then Billy Ray Cyrus did a cover right. of it or whatever. But um, yeah, it was under two minutes, which is like what? You, I can't even kind of process it. Yes. Like two minutes. But that I want a two-minute intro. Like, that's because we're old. <laughs> it, like, True. It, eight, eight, well, obviously not. But like the 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 fifteen year old, that's like totally. Mm. That's probably about all. You know, like a, a six minute song with like a minute intro. They're just going to turn over before it gets to the song. Maybe then I was also I also I don't know. But then I feel like don't underestimate your audience. You know, I also feel yeah. I I hear that do give them credit but I also feel like I'm not making music for 15 year olds yeah I'm when definitely I was, not yeah, yeah when I was and also the right 15 year old I was listening to some wild stuff when I was 15 the right 15 year olds will find it mm. but on the most part I'm not speaking to 15 year olds because like what can 15 I couldn't care less if someone's playing it on their phone at school well, that would be cool because it's <laughs> like a, it's a, it is like a sentimental thing like in terms of if we're talking about art as an anchor and, and art as a tool to encourage presence, 15-year-olds not going to be able to appreciate that. Like, I'm not their parent. Or, or maybe that could be a, the artist's responsibility, but... What do you think the artist's responsibility is? The artist's responsibility... is such a heavy question. I think the artist's responsibility, first and foremost, is to be a servant to the truth mm. in whatever shape or form that comes that's first and foremost a personal truth of i am who i am and i'm unashamed mm -hmm. and i'm dying and decaying as every day passes and that's beautiful mm -hmm. it's like the, the the first rung of the ladder then there's like a social responsibility of of being able to keep your head in times of madness mm -hmm. and kind of piercing the social veil of normality to let people kind of have a glimpse into the, the brilliance of life, you know, like the, the the world of spectrum, the world of colours, the world out of binary poles of 
sane, insane, right, wrong, good or bad, mm. kind of encourage them or lead them to a place of where they experience a more varied experience. Mm. I think those, and also, obviously, those responsibilities fall on yourself all of the time and then telling the stories of what you learn. But I do feel that there is a responsibility to... to all right, for my personal responsibility is to try and appease anyone who I come into contact with fear of death. That's my ultimate overarching um, responsibility, I feel. I feel like I've got to a place where I can stare at it, and I have stared at it in those, in those times where I've managed to make space for myself. I've stared long and hard into that void and let it destroy me and found strength to build myself. Your fear of death. Yeah, just yeah, just death itself. My fear of death, my fear of non-existence, my fear of non-importance, my fear of detachment and attachment. And I've and I've let it destroy me and realized I'm still on the other side of it. Mm. And that there will always be something else. And now it's just about kind of having those conversations with other people or and and leaving little totems and relics and signs out into the world that can kind of get people to that same position because the sense of presence that I felt, the sense of freedom that I felt in those moments is unparalleled to anything I've ever experienced aside from love, mm. reciprocated love um, in life. Mm. So that's my personal responsibility, you know. But I feel like it, it's, uh, it's heavy, but I feel like it's supposed to be. Responsibility mm. is supposed to be heavy and not in a way of where it crushes you, but in a way of where it makes you stronger. Mm. Um, okay, I've got another question for you. Ooh. What do you think, what do you see as success? Like as an, as an artist, what do you see as success? Because I find this really interesting because lots of people say to me, or like, you know, people come up and say like, oh my God, I heard your song on this. Oh, you're the most played artist in six music at the moment, or like you've got this, you've collaborated with this person. I mean, having Jay Electronica on your album, that's pretty that's pretty yeah, good. Yeah, that was a nice moment. <laughs> that's a pretty good <laughs> indication nice of moment. success. But and then I'm like, okay, so that's how you that's how you see as mm. as success. Mm. That's has that that individual telling me that I'm successful. That's mm. how they see success. And then I'm like Okay, I'm. I can't afford my rent this month. Yeah. So I've had to Airbnb my flat out, and I've been I've been sofa surfing. So does that minimize my success, or you know, or, or what represents it, or the fact that I've sold out a gig in London and walked out to a full room? Does that does and people are telling me that that's success, and I'm like. So what is success? Because I find it really hard to like gauge. Like yeah. one day I'm like, yeah, I feel successful today because I've written a song that I'm proud of. Or like after a gig and and you feel like it's gone well and, and you've had an exchange of emotion with uh, your audience. And I'm like, okay, well that feels success. But then but then I feel like those moments are so like Yeah. You can't hold on to them for, for too long. Well, they they dissolve quite quickly. So, like, what what's your what's your idea of success? It's not defined by. Although, if I was the most played artist on Radio Six, I would definitely consider that to be a success. And those external validations are are nice, and I and I would welcome them. I wouldn't allow that to define success because it's like. But it can't, can it? Because it's 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 a personal thing. I think. Yeah, for sure. Like I was, I was thinking as soon as you said that that person sees you as successful, but that's defined by what they desire, and I don't desire the same things as those people. I don't desire validation. I like to know when I've done something right, so that I can use it as a tool to keep doing that thing. Um, but it's not about uh, it's not about validation for me. Success is I showed. Uh, the first single I put out for my EP to my to a friend, and he called me and was like, "This reaffirmed my faith in God," and I said, "That's the most incredible compliment I've ever received." Mm. But to hear that, it's like, 
I'm doing something right. I can finally consider myself as on the right track. Mm. Um, for me, success is to to be able to have somebody say that you made me see in a new way. Yeah, yeah I would agree with that. That's, agree with that. that's success for me. You you gave me permission to change, or mm. you 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 allowed me to give myself permission to change. That's uh, I think or is like this song helped me through this or made me feel less lonely. I think mm. that's one that's always like okay, then it's worth it. Yeah, you know, I like I remember when I first released music and like I remember when my a song got to like a thousand plays mm. and I was like, whoa. That song has been listened to a thousand times the whole way through. Yeah. That's deep. And that was like, that like really like floored me. Now I'm like, oh, I've only had 130,000 plays on Spotify this month. That's really bad. Like, 130,000 is so many. Yeah, but <laughs> but that's how warped it gets. I know. That's, Do you know what I mean? Or is... like, oh, that's nice. That and the most played artisan. That's nice. And then it's, kind of not and it's like always the like it's nice for a moment and it's like obviously like oh that's really nice but it dissipates quite quickly that mm. feeling how are you learning about yourself learning about yourself in what sense choosing which parts to kill off mm. choosing which parts of you actually don't serve you at all oh right well that that always that usually comes from you know i'm training training to be a therapist on the side really yeah i've just taken a break actually but um I think that, that that's been an amazing process um, for my music and my and just like my growth as a human actually mm. um, and like working that stuff out like what serves me and what doesn't and like you know putting like boundaries in place kind of safeguarding myself as well from myself as well a yeah. lot of the time. Um, it's interesting this divide between therapy and art like you training to be a, th a therapist but aren't an artist and a therapist like almost one in the same yeah 100% just one gets paid and one doesn't no I'm joking I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> no, I am um, yeah they, they kind I guess they kind of are one in the same but I never want to I mean I'm really happy to have the responsibility of someone coming to me and and talking to me and and me being their therapist and us making that decision to work it through it together. Mm. But I don't want to have the responsibility in music to... I'm not making music to help someone through something. That's far too big a responsibility. I'm making music that I need to make in that moment and that's real. Mm. And if that helps someone along the way, then that's just great. If you were to think about an artist, like mm -hmm. your ideal of mm -hmm. what an artist is um, and the responsibilities that they undertake, um, who would you think of? Like, that person's really got it right. Erica Badu. Okay. She's like a spiritual, like, I just feel like she helps a lot of people in the way that she expels love and talks of, talks about love and expresses love. And, like, she's not... I, she's... I, well, I don't see her as religious, mm. but I see her as, like, spiritual. I wouldn't say that she's just a musician. She's, like... She's, like, a b being. <laughs> Does that make sense? No, yeah, it's of like, course. I always feel like... Also, as a woman, like, the way that she's, like, continued her career, she's had children, she, she's a doula on the side. She's a what? A doula. What's that? It's like a spiritual midwife for people okay. when they give birth. Wow. Um, That's mental. A yeah. spiritual midwife. Yeah. It's, like, so right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Makes so much sense. I'm like, okay, I'll just, yeah. All I right. mean, they know a lot about, like... I think that she's actually, I think that she's done like midwifery courses and stuff oh, okay. as well. So she can actually deliver. But, um, but yeah, I just feel like she's like, there's like a 360, very kind of real. She doesn't give a shit what people think. Like mm. she, her voice is like totally authentic. 
I just think, I think she's got it right. She takes time. You know, she's like, I'm not going to release music until I'm really excited about what I'm making. And that should be what is, that is as far as I'm concerned, that's, that's what it should be. Mm. You shouldn't release music in, to, unless you're like, I need to get this out. Like, not like, I have to get this out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Out of fear. <laughs> or like, yeah, because I'm going to not kind of be current and apparent. I'm not going to matter. Whatever. I'm not going to matter if I don't keep on releasing music or like, you know, Radio 1 aren't going to blame me because the producer won't know my name. Like, whatever. Like, you know, she's like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to do a project all about like phones and it's going to be for the kids. And like, yeah, I might do this gig here, there. Artist's responsibility to expel love. Mm. That's an interesting statement. Mm. Which I kind of just put into your mouth. Yeah, a, yeah. I don't know if I made it, but I, I can make it. <laughs> <laughs> I, like to, I like to hear about your relationship with love and your knowledge of it, how it shifted throughout your 20s, I guess. Mm. Yeah, I've had like the biggest journey with allowing to be myself to be loved by myself and by others um it's been like a huge 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 shift mm. and like it's totally changed me um as a person and a friend and and like yeah as a human really like it's been it's been pretty deep but me and my partner went to start going to um relationship therapy together how long ago would that have been like maybe 6 years ago and not because there was anything, like, wrong as such, but because we came from such different backgrounds, like, opposite backgrounds. I'm, I came from, like, a atheist, like, total, totally liberal, like, quite, like, hippie kind of upbringing. And he came from, like, a bit more of a conservative, very religious um, upbringing. And it meant that we communicated our emotions and love in very different ways. Um, obviously, I'm a huge advocate for therapy. Um, and he was going to therapy as well. So we were like, let's just try it out. Like, we were both up for that. And um, it was insane. Like, the best thing I've ever done in my life. Like, ama amazing, what was incredible, so crazy? wonderful. It, I just learned about, like more about myself than ever before because obviously when you're in a one-to-one -one session you're learning a huge amount but you're learning your you're 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 communicating what you want to one other person right without somebody there being a witness of that mm. when the person that you're in love with and who witnesses you day in day out is there it's like you have no. I'm. I'm. I don't go into therapy sessions and lie. Yeah. But we all have a version of ourselves that we want to be, and I think that it's incredibly um, revealing to ha be so honest in front of someone else there, and it just. I guess having a witness to that was a. It, it enabled me to be able to see myself in a completely different light and him. It was, that, it was so so beautiful to be able to go that through that with someone and be that vulnerable. And anyway, we learned how to communicate with each other and we learned how we needed to be communicated to mm. within a relationship. But that also had a huge effect on like learning how I needed to be communicated to in times of vulnerability to myself too, how I needed to communicate to myself, how I needed my friends to communicate to me, how I needed to be heard. How he needed to be heard, it made me start thinking about how other people needed to be heard. Like it just, it just like whew, blew everything up. And I don't think I've really like, I don't think that I like, I believed in love. Obviously I believed in love. Like I felt love before that. But I believed that love would always fall apart. Like I just, just, felt like there was always an end to love you know like I, I was brought up in a in a from split parents and I think I, like of all my friends one parents were together and we just came from like a 
a place of like lots of separation and and you know divorced situations or or like never married you know and I just don't really believed I don't think I really believed in monogamy and long term relationships and that like it completely shifted that like it made me see that things can get really bad and you can also desire somebody else and you can be tested and all of that stuff but at the end of the day it's a choice in that moment it's like a choice and it doesn't mean that that's written out for you is love as difficult to define as art is yeah i think it is because it's like i don't think you can i don't think you can define it i mean you defined it quite maybe not the feeling or the energy but the 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 commitment to always choose to choose what to choose I think that choice is a really big part of it. Mm. Like I think as humans when choice is taken away from us I think that's when things start like and I feel that with music as well sometimes like when I feel like I don't have a choice like, um that's when things kind of start breaking down and going wrong I think. Um and you know me and my partner we say to each other like every day we're pretty realistic about like that we're getting married in September but like really? and I hope to have a long marriage but I'm really realistic like there's going to be, be people that test me like of course there is there's going to be like amazing people that test him and there's going to be times that I don't want to be with him and vice versa but like we say to each other like every day we make the choice like I choose you and if there's any days that we we don't want to make that choice and we need to talk about it and we'll either work through it or we won't. Mm. But like, you've got to be realistic about the fact that like, you know, people go into these things being like, this, their expectations are way too high of each other. And it's like, we're only human at the end of the day. Like, you've got to be willing to see like all the ugly stuff too. And there are going to be like many, many tests. And you've got to be up for the tests. Like, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, like, 100% be tested. And there's going to be times that, like, I want to run away so far from that relationship. But, like, as long as you can acknowledge that, that that's happening and be present with it, then, like, that's fine. The one thing that I don't find being hard being present with is him. Even when you've got work to do? Um, or even when you feel like you have I mean, I've always got work to do. <laughs> exactly. Um... I mean, yeah, I mean, he's he's really busy and I'm really busy. We're pretty understanding of each other in that way, but... Yeah, no, I'm I'm pretty irritable and, like, oh, I need God. <laughs> one or the other. Yeah, I do. Whoever like... said that women can multitask is a liar. I can't. <laughs> I do, like, five minutes on the sofa or five minutes in bed cuddling and it's like... All right, now I feel there. like I've got to do something. Like <laughs> I haven't really <laughs> yeah. utilised in my time enough. <laughs> yeah. um, and it takes her a little bit longer to get to that point, but she gets yeah. there too, which is good. I guess maybe it's about finding... The right person is finding someone who has uh, the same duration until they get bored, till they get annoyed, yeah. till they start feeling like they really need to make something. Like yeah, that's the... exactly. Exactly, and finding someone who understands that, like the importance of making something, you know? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's a it's a it's an incredible journey to be on at the same time as finding your creating your future as an artist. Yeah. Because they're so synonymous. You know, I realize that when I'm not in a space of presence with my girlfriend, I'm probably not with creation either. Mm. And then when I am in that state, I think that creativity comes much easier because the reason I'm not connecting with her is because I'm putting up walls, I'm putting up barriers yeah. Yeah. and I'm hiding in some aspect. And when mm. I'm hiding, I'm, gonna f I'm hiding from ideas too. Yeah. Because I'm hiding really from the truth, which is how I feel about something in, in a certain way. Or maybe it's even things like I, I, I really struggle with uh, not making stuff. If I haven't made something, if I haven't created anything like... I don't, I don't feel human almost, mm. or I don't feel worth anything. Mm. I'm like, well, 
I'm not. I feel like a, a, a thirty-year-old guy living. I'm not thirty, but I feel like a thirty-year-old guy living at home <laughs> with his parents and not paying any rent. Like I'm like yeah. I'm existing and I'm not doing anything with the magnificence of life. And I've really struggled to just sit down and just be in it. But don't you think like? Don't you think that sometimes like not making things is as important as making things? It's taken me a while to get there, but I really believe that. Yeah, I do. In the I feel like there's seasons for making things. Yeah. I do agree because it brings me closer to the sacredness of creation when yeah. I don't have it. Like, obviously, separation makes me appreciate it a bit more. But I, if I had my way, I would just <laughs> constantly be pouring really? stuff out. Yeah, because I feel like... I know that that pool I'm dipping into and dipping out of with something is endless. So it's really interesting. See, I found myself getting really scared. It's so funny. Still, I guess I found myself getting so scared about like touching it. Mm. And then when I'm in it, it's fine. Yeah, like it's fine. Yeah, but it's like the it's like the opening that rusty gate and actually just touching it or like starting it is the start. I just, it just fills me with fear and anxiety still. And it's like, I've been doing this for years. Like, mm. I just wonder if that's ever going to go. And then I wonder if, like, the day it does go, that, that might that might be problematic. Because maybe I'm so scared because it's so sacred. Mm. I don't know. I don't know. But I still, like, even yesterday, I was, like, putting off. I was, I was like, fucking, like, scrolling. And I was looking at BBC News constantly. <laughs> I was like, ah, Corona! But Corona! But corona how can uh, I corona. work with Corona? <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, why am I putting it off? And then as soon as I started, and I started, like, writing lyrics and, like, singing, I was like, oh, God, I could have just, like, started two hours earlier. But mm. I fucked around because I was just, like, paralyzed with fear of something. Do you ever feel the power? Every morning. Really? It's, it's my, every morning before my cold shower, it's the stood there with my dressing gown on, looking at the water coming out of the shower and being like, why does this never get easier? Like, why mm. can't I just step in and be used to it? Um, so that's like quite a literal representation. But every day on the way, every morning I wake up like, fuck, studio today. I've got to go there. I've got to lock in because if I don't, I'll hate myself because I, I know that I'm the only person, I'm the reason why I didn't lock in and mm. I didn't focus and I didn't, because I didn't surrender. Yeah. Um, so it's like, it's the, it, every morning there's a mountain to climb and, and but I, I agree with you. What happens if we get rid of that? Do we lose our humanity and the thing that makes what we create resonate with people because mm. it's such a universal fear? Or is on the other side of that some access to your potential that is like larger than anything you could ever even comprehend? If well, the you problem can... is when I'm when I'm when I'm when I when I'm when I get high, yeah, I don't fear it. No, yeah, for sure. So that's problematic. So I've tried to stop smoking now when I'm writing because I'm like that can't become. My crutch. My crutch. Mm. Like, oh, I have to smoke to make music because I'm scared. Yeah. And it gets me over that. And also, like, I can't keep on, like, staying up till five in the morning thinking I'm an absolute genius <laughs> because it's absolutely, like, the best thing that's ever been made. And then fear listening to it the next day till, like, 10 p.m., listen to it and be like, what was that bullshit? Does that happen often? <laughs> or that was amazing. Like, one or the other. Um, yeah, it was when I was like, you know, I spent, I spent, like... This last album, I didn't really smoke to mm. make it. The first album, I was completely high the whole time. I'm the opposite. My first EP, I was absolutely sober for the really? whole thing because I wanted to do that thing of like, I didn't want, mm. I want to know what I'm capable of. And now I'm like, yeah, cool. I'll take a little bit of mushrooms in the morning. Really? <laughs> I'll smoke when I get to the studio. I'll maybe have five or six coffees. Like, whatever I can do to get myself in a state of vulnerability, really. Mm. Maybe it's that's... not the vulnerability that I find hard. It's the switching off the other crap. What's the other crap? Um, that it's the it's the voice. It's the self critic. It's the um, it's the that shit. That lyrics cheesy. That melody just sounds like everything else you've ever done. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
oh, you're going to pick that chord. But that's the... Rosie, you idiot. That, that's the defence mechanism. That's the thing that's trying to keep you safe. So actually, while that voice is chattering, yeah. you're not vulnerable because there's still a part of you that's afraid to be open, I guess. For me, anyway, like when, when I'm hearing that voice, I know something's trying to like preserve itself. And whenever I feel my ego coming in to shield itself or guard itself because I know that actually I'm about to do something that's about to put you out of business what do you mean by putting you out of business like the ego I I see I'm not training to be a therapist so Mm -hmm. I I don't Mm -hmm. all I have is what I've interpreted yeah the ego is a is a is a your safeguard it's the it's the thing that stops you falling to protect you to to protect you to stop you falling into voids basically Mm. says don't walk over there because you'll die and then now, because we don't really have the external threat of death every single day, it turns itself inwards to your thoughts. Mm. And then when you start thinking things that put you into new territory, which decreases its power, because you're like, I'm, o- I'm overriding you, you're mm. putting it out of business. And like, you can look at automation and people who don't want to lose their jobs. It's the same thing. They respond in the same way. The ego starts like kicking up a gear, starts mm. like really trying to pull you back. But because that's just it's safe. But, yeah, because but but also because it wants a job. Yeah. It wants something to do because yeah. it, like me, at certain points, is afraid to be rendered useless. Mm. But you know, rendering the ego useless, and or. I guess, taming it and becoming a master of it and using it when, like, things really need to be safeguarded. It has to be a servant And I do think that it's about separating it and being like, I hear you. Mm. That's that's wicked, but, like, not right now. That's, like, just not going to be helpful right now. That's one way of dealing with it. Another way for me dealing with it is having a spliff. Yeah, for sure. (laughs) And it just disappears. Yeah. (laughs) Because you're, like, a playground. You're, You're a kid in the sandpit like making some castles and you don't give a shit about what just like switches all of that those voices off I Mm. feel but it's not good to rely on that stuff but it's just part of the process isn't it it's Mm. process yeah it's like what you were saying before like about like what what the last few years has brought I think I feel like the process is like I feel like like you, you you compared love and music they're just both so revealing. Mm. So revealing. Like, that's what I love about music so much is you can't hide behind it. Like, as much as you want to, obviously you don't have to release it all, but you just can't. I can't, I cannot hide behind music. It's like... What do you mean by you can't hide behind it? Okay, just say that this is, like, the worst example ever, okay. right? But, like, say that I've, like, caught some feelings towards someone, but obviously I don't want to acknowledge that. Yeah. Because I'm in a relationship. This hasn't happened, by the way. This is an example. There is no way that that's not going to come out through my music. Even if I don't know that it's coming out, I'm like, oh, fuck. (laughs) Oh, delete. (laughs) Delete! (laughs) Delete! Like, that's coming out in some other way, and I feel like that always happens. Like, if it's there, it's going to come out in mm. some way. Like there's no, there's no, there's no hiding it. Like as I say, you don't have to release stuff, but it like it will reveal itself. Yeah, and you'll have to look at it. You have to look at it, and you'll have to figure it out. Maybe that's why it's so scary to get over that hump for us. Maybe that's the cold shower. Mm. And maybe that's the responsibility. And I, 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 I wrestle like you with the, with the idea of is the responsibility to guide people towards that awakening that you have to confront it and you have to know that you'll be okay, like I think? Or is it more, I guess, the side you lean on, which is I'll do it in front of everybody else and not say that, like not say anything about it, not try to like guide, Mm. teach or lecture in any way, but just be an example. And I, I often, that's the kind of fight that I have quite a lot at the moment, like... I don't know, maybe this is a, a, a male, female, masculine, feminine thing mm. of, like, wanting to lead. I feel like authenticity just shows, rears its head in, like, all sorts of ways, and people respond to that. Mm. Like, 
I I feel like if I had an idea about like what a song should mean to somebody, then it probably isn't going to mean what I want it to. Mm. Like I don't know. I feel like you can't kind of. I always feel like a huge sense of relief when I release music because it's no longer mine. Mm. It's like no longer my mind to bear in a way. It's like I'm giving it away, and like if it kind of ripples with somebody if it like touches somebody then wicked and if it doesn't and it goes over everyone else and that's cool too but like it feels like yeah I never I I never think about I don't even try not to I just never think about like the kind of responsibility in a in a way in that way emotionally because I just feel like I feel like that would be too much to handle for me mm. I need to or I will spend more time thinking about it so I always I, I, I don't know whether I've got it right or wrong <laughs> I don't think that there is any right or wrong though is there well there if it's touching people then it's touching people but maybe it's just like a, maybe it's just a personal issue of feeling like I always need to feel like I'm of, of service externally in that sense of like leading people to a I don't know, maybe this just... To a pond, to a water source. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to some kind of well, to some yeah. kind of novelty. And I, I, I do, I, I wrestle with this quite a lot often, uh, to be honest, feeling like... wondering if if I'm ahead of the curve or if I've just got it completely wrong. or if Because I look at the world and I look at the madness and I look at the fear... And I look at the way, I look at what motivates people. And I see so much fear. So then I think, okay, well then the first thing I need to do is be fearless. That's mm. my first responsibility as an artist. Because then at least someone will be able to go, well, he clearly doesn't care. He doesn't, he's not afraid of the things I'm afraid of. So there's one other way to live life. Or there's one other way to see. But then it's like, okay, well, do my way of being fearless is like being willing to stand on something and go, that's the way. That's the way. We must all travel together. Or like to be certain about mm. something is my version of fearlessness because we live in such times of uncertainty. Mm. And I think what we actually need to get back is not necessarily certainty because like in a scientific sense like of rationality and facts and all of those things because I actually think they're quite cancerous. I think certainty in that sense is a bit of a disease. But certainty in faith. You know in the way where you have faith in something where you can't quite be sure but you know. There's a still a margin of error but but you know. And I think that's the the certainty that I'm feel like need, uh, at least I need to adopt. So yeah, I struggle. I think that that's great if you can be that person. Like for me, the responsibility to be that person would be too much to bear. But that's because probably I'm not that person. Mm. You know, like I I don't know. I've never felt like, I've never felt the need to lead. Yeah. I've just always felt like the need to be, um, I don't know. I've never actually really thought about it. It's quite deep. Yeah. Well, that's the whole point of this. <laughs> yeah. But again, like I said, maybe it is a man-woman thing of like, well, the reason that we're in it might be because of people like me. Mm. The reason that the world is in such turmoil is because of people who think they know what to do and think they know what, which way is the way mm. or a way, potentially. It's funny because um, when, I, when I started going out with dating Jacob, you know, I was a total atheist. Yeah. And he has faith. Mm. Um, he has faith. Mm. It's such a... It's such an interesting sentence, but carry on. 
Well, he said he he says that he's not religious, but he has faith. Mm. So he doesn't like the structure of religion, mm. but he has a relationship with his God. Mm. Um, but I'm quite a spiritual person, but not from a religious aspect, like, but from a kind of um, like I'm quite spiritual um, in many ways. Anyway, it's been like really interesting that that the, those two worlds coming together because it's had to I've had to open my mind up quite wide to like even consider I was brought up a real atheist mm. in a way and uh, in a way kind of was yeah and it's just it's just coming from such different places and falling in love with someone who intrinsically believes that we're going to different places. What do you mean? After life's done. I was saying, you see, well, okay, that yeah, that's a different... But that's like, that was just like one practical version okay, okay. of it. But like, we, we... But basically what I learned was like, we actually don't really believe different things. We mm. just... Just the details mm. are different. And neither of us know the details. But actually, we kind of... I call my... I I wouldn't say I've got faith, but I would say that I'm spiritual and yeah. I believe in energy. He'd say that he has faith with a God. Like it, it call them different things, but they're mu they're, they're really the same thing. Yeah, for sure. It's like it's like having hope in something that believing in something that does isn't like physical like right in front of you it's like believing that there's more than what we see and i don't know the line between hope and faith is quite interesting like i feel like it's the difference between possible and probable like hope yeah hope's possible whereas faith is probable like it's well really you'd say that way around yeah, I would. Could I would you? say hope is like whimsical, like, oh yeah, I hope so. Whereas faith is like, I have faith. It's very stoic. It's very like, mm. I have faith. Whereas I have hope. It doesn't quite work. It's like, I have hope. That's how I. Yeah, I guess that's so. That's the intonation naturally yeah. that comes with it. But this. Um, don't you think they're the same thing? No, I don't. Don't you think having. F oh. Um. Uh, yeah, actually, yeah. like as soon as I said it, I don't even agree with the sentence. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, having ha being hopeful and having faith isn't the same thing. No. I don't think either. There's like a weird certainty about faith. There's like it's almost like yeah. quite militant faith, the faithful. And that's why I would say I don't have faith. Why? Because I'm not certain mm. about anything. But not even. Well, okay, yeah. Yeah, I hear you, but not even certain to, like you just said, the fact that there's something more going on than what we're either being told, sold, or aware of. Yeah. But that's a certainty in itself. Or maybe... Yeah, but I'm not certain of it. Yeah, true. Like, I go between the two. Sometimes I'm like, well, I believe in, like, I believe in energy. Mm. And I believe that when you walk into a room, like... There's an energy. I believe that you can kind of tell, you can feel bad energy. But then when someone's like, do you believe in ghosts? I'm like, no. <laughs> and they're like, well, what is energy? And I'm like, like vibration. And they're like, well, what is... And I'm, I actually don't know. Like, I don't know if I believe in energy anymore. <laughs> like, I don't know. You know the, the term, hold your beliefs lightly. Mm. I basically just hold my beliefs lightly. <laughs> I think that's the I think that's the madness of of well, the madness of life first and foremost, but the madness of artistry and art is that you have to hold those both those things in your hands at the same time and wrestle with the paradox, which is why I called your uh uh album delicately thunderous because mm. it's like these paradoxes that we live in that we have to kind of wrestle with and hopefully blend into one. It's like, mm. it's so uh, nonsensical that it, I don't, I don't know, once I start getting into this thing, I go mm. round and round in circles and nothing means anything anymore. I do believe in art though. Exactly. I can't say that I believe, 
I can't say like what I believe in spiritually. I know I'm spiritual. But I can't say what that is, but I do believe in art. Mm. Like in a way that I never believed in religion. That's something that I don't doubt never wavers. Believe in art, is it believe in art to, or is it believe in art? Like what is the, what's the belief in? I believe that art takes you to a higher place. Mm. Like I believe that art can transport people to a place of subconscious um, to a deeper, to like a deeper place where I feel like a lot of people experience with religion mm. that I haven't had the experience with religion or haven't been lucky enough to because it's, when art does that to you, that's deep and that's incredible. And that's why I like, I think religion can be amazing if that can be something that, if that can be a vehicle of transporting someone to a higher place than Wicked, like the place where I get to with that, that gives when you me create? the tingles down my spine, and I just listening. I, I love listening to music. I love, I love music. Mm. I do. I love watching dance. I get it with dance where I get the tingles down my spine. I get it with like photography as well. Like I'm such a photography fan, and like it's like another way of storytelling, you know. And I. That that's how I get to that place where I don't like I'm my conscience my con I'm not in a state of like my conscious is leading me. It's like a complete place of kind of kind of like a you know submerged in water almost, but mm. like submerged in in whatever the art is that that's, I'm experiencing. So it's, it's interesting to use that analogy, considering that the subconscious is always referred to as an ocean. Yeah. So, like the 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 uh, visualization of being submerged, it's like it's the to be conscious without being self conscious. Mm. That's like a, exactly what what a gift, you know. And even if that's art is a, is a tool to, or even if the responsibility of an artist is to allow people to be conscious without but being self conscious. I just don't think that you can. <laughs> How, like, that's so, you, you can't, you can't control that. This is basically what I feel like with that stuff is like, if someone said to me, like, right, create something where people can be conscious without being self conscious, I'd be like, I can't fucking. <laughs> where do, do I that. even begin? <laughs> like, for starters, like, everyone's different. Mm. Everyone's going to respond to a piece of art differently, like, which is why I love art. Which is why I love making music. Like I don't, I don't. I love the fact that I can like a song can ripple with me so deeply, and then it can not even touch the next person. Like that excites me. It doesn't scare me. Um, like I just don't. I think. Yeah, like I just don't think I think it's too much of a responsibility to do that. I feel like you just got to make stuff, and then if that happens, then great. That is going to happen with people with something, but you know, it might happen with someone with a, you know, with a trap song, and it might happen with someone else with like some deep jazz, and it might happen with someone else with some like out and out pop. Like, do you know what I mean? Like mm. people. People are touched by different things. I just don't think that you can, we can, I don't think that we as artists can, are responsible for that. Mm. Well, we are, but like, I feel like it's a, it's responsible without knowing that we are, or like without kind of being conscious that you are. Mm. For me, that consciousness would kill the process. Interesting. I have to experiment. Yeah, that's actually a really interesting thing. It's like the the keeping perspective with music as well, because it might feel really good in the moment to make something. That's what I'd say is like changed a lot from album one to album two. Is on album one, I was so. You said in the in, in when you were doing the introduction to this that like album one felt like, and it was like I was so in it that I couldn't hear it, and that was what I wanted it to be for album one I wanted that was kind of like my goal and it definitely was how it happened 
but I was like so immersed I couldn't hear it. And then this, the process to album two was, it was like, the reason why it took two years is because I was, there was a lot of space in between. You know, I'd start creating something and then I'd just like remove myself consciously because I wanted to be able to keep perspective. It was like a test for me. I was like, how do I keep perspective? Because I lose perspective so quickly when I'm making music because I'm so entrenched in it that I can no longer hear it. And I was like, I want to try and keep perspective over a longer period of time so I can craft this song. Instead of letting the song write me, I want to write the song. And so I was like, okay, I'll write a bit and it would feel good. And then I'd be, I'd know the time to like separate myself and I'd separate myself and I'd remove myself. And then I'd come back and I'd be like, oh, I can fucking hear it. And I know what it needs. And I'd do a bit and I'd do the same again. And like, it wasn't on every song. Some songs just like happened like that. But like Pharaoh, one of the songs, it took like, it took me like four months to write that song. And I was like dipping in, dipping out, dipping in, dipping out. And I'd be like, I think I wrote like 15 different chorus ideas for it. And I was just like, I'd be like, write something and I'd feel good about it. But I'd be like, right, that's down, step away, come back. And I'd be like, yeah, not good enough. I can write better. And then I'd try something else again. It was like a long process and it was like totally different from anything I'd ever done because it was like, I guess I was using my conscious mind in a lot more in a different way than I ever had. It wasn't like... The song wasn't writing itself. It was like, no, I'm I'm approaching this also as a listener. Mm. And I don't want to hear that chorus. I want to mm. hear something better. See, there's that's the... That kind of like makes me feel good because there's a, there's the you've stepped in in the process there and like i said you can hear it you can hear the control mm. you can hear it almost like these are just tools these mm. sounds are just tools and i'm using them to create something bigger than just the song itself which yeah. is the i don't know, the, the feeling there you know you can call it whatever you want but it's interesting that that happens once you take control which is antithesis to like I guess the postmodern art world that we're coming out of now, which is no control, splats on a canvas, big yeah. blocks of colour. I don't want to be present. I don't want to be in control. Mm. And we're finding actually that as we slowly start to curve back upwards, it's the control. It's the element of mastery. It's the it's holding yourself accountable as well. Exactly. And being like, I can do better than that. Mm. And that's actually you have to get to like an understanding with yourself to do that because it's quite scary to do that because it's like, well, what if you can't? What if you what can't if do better than that? What if you fail? What if this is all I am? What if that's all I am? But you've got to fucking try, don't you? And you've got to like, and it's like, it, it is amazing doing that. And it's like, sometimes it's like really laborious and like, oh, I just want to finish it. And I just want to move on and like, you know, I wrote this song three months ago and so like it doesn't really exist to me in the same way so I'd be like right well make it exist in the same mm. way that lyric doesn't mean anything to me anymore so change it like who said that the moment that you write a song it has to exist exactly as that there's a time and a place for that and like that is absolutely like sacred those points like I really do believe that and like I will always cherish those bits those songs where that happens but also sometimes it's like well this is my job and I have to try and make this the best like it can possibly be. And actually, like, that's what that's what I'm going to do. Mm. You know, that's 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 the responsibility that I have. And that's the responsibility that I'm going to I'm going to take that. So I did that a lot with the last album. And that's something that I'm like, with each new project, I'm like, OK, how do I better myself? How do I challenge myself more like the thing that I never want to get is comfortable. Mm. And if I'm comfortable, then there's something wrong. That like I should not be comfortable in what I'm making. It should not feel comfortable because then it's like, it's it's too easy. Mm. I, should, I always need to be getting better. Like that's something that I'm really, I'm pretty like about. Like obviously that like, there's a moment to sit with things, but like when I come off stage, it's probably really frustrating for my team. But I'm like, Wicked, nice, 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 nice. I'll celebrate that night. Like, I'm not very good at celebrating myself, but I will be like, okay, I'll take a moment to, like, 
acknowledge where we've come or whatever. But first thing that I really want to think is like, right, what was wrong? Mm. How can I improve? Like, I'm not, I'm very sensitive, but I'm also like, things need to be bettering. Like, yeah. I'm not interested in doing two gigs the same. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not interested in doing two songs the same, two albums the same. I'm like, right, that didn't work. Why? How do we make that better? Like, and it's not, and it's not, it's not coming from a place of worthlessness or insecurity. It's coming from an, a sport element of yeah. like, this is a performance sport. Yeah. I'm going out there to be elite. I'm going mm. out there to be better every time. And it's not because I don't feel that I'm good enough. It's because I want to know how good I can be. A hundred percent. And it's knowing that you can be better. Mm. Like, I wasn't able to do that before. I wasn't able to even hear any, like, constructive criticism because it was my identity and that meant that yeah. I wasn't good enough, you know? But, like, there has to be a play a time where you can be like, okay. That's cool, but where can I get better? Because you can get better, mm. and it feels better. And when it, there's something about like pushing myself and challenging myself that just excites me, like it really does. I don't, I don't find any excitement in like being in really comfortable situations. Obviously, there's a time and place for comfort, mm. um, but I do feel, I do believe in like pushing the boundaries a little bit. I love the definition. A definition of art being um, art as a reminder you could always be better. You could always do better. Mm. I like that. Once you divorce it from the idea of like insecurity and identity and worthlessness, like mm. it's very, very empowering and very mm. encouraging. Um, so just to just to finalize, mm. um, I want to hear about your relationship with failure now. Mm. I want to know if you've ever been to a point of where you've gone, is this all I am? And then, yeah. It is. Have you ever reached that point of like, I've got nothing more to give? Or has there always been more thread to pull on? I'm always just a step away from giving up. But something pushes me on. Like, I think often, how do I get out of this? Like, how do I... Maybe I should have a baby, that's my way out. <laughs> I think about that's that That's really fucking interesting. <laughs> I'm like, this is my way out. But not of music, it's of the industry. And I think it's really important to... To yeah, separate yeah, yeah, yeah. those two things. Yeah. Um, and I'm terrified of failure. Like, I'm terrified of failure. But I'm as terrified of failure as I am of success. Like, so those two things are, like, at, at an equilibrium for me. Like, and they, like, they're, like, they kind of run together in tandem mm. um, in my life. Um, I think that, I mean, as I was saying earlier, like, I feel like in terms of, like, my view of what success was five years ago, have I failed? Probably. In terms of, like, money. <laughs> of If that was what success was. Like, I can't even remember what success was for me five years ago. Like, the bar's always changing, mm. you know? Um... Well, you're here speaking to me, so I can't. You you can't have failed really at any point, and you've no. But some things feel like a failure, don't they? Like I, I feel like I've had gigs that feel like a total failure, mm. and it's like after that gig, you uh, have to just like pick every limb up from the ground and pick yourself back together. And there's something that keeps me doing that, mm. like after a gig there's so, some there's hope so failure actually is the inability to find that thing that picks you up off the ground that's the only real failure yeah, i mean i think i think that the i think i mean i just don't i don't know i find it really hard to define failure because it just is whatever failure is in that moment it's like just ever changing i'm sorry to be so vague but sorry. like right now what does failure look like to me Like once upon a time, success would have been having, be just being able to, okay, success once upon a time would have been being able to release the albums I wanted to make. And that meant doing it with a record deal. Right now, my version of success is not that. It's being able to release music independently and own my own masters. That's now my goal. 
as an artist that's done an, an EP in two albums, going into my third album, my goal is that I want to be able to release music independently in the near future. And I'm not in that situation right now. But that definitely wasn't a goal a few years ago. I, you know, 10 years ago, I might have thought that that would have been a failure, having mm. to release music independently. Like you, when you said about, I'm as afraid of success as I am of failure. Both of those, to me, in the context of this conversation, are succeeding and failing at knowing what you're capable of or wanting the same. Mm. Because it, it undermines the process. If you succeed in knowing what you're capable of, you know your limits, mm. which is absolutely terrifying. But if you don't succeed, then you, you never really... You're always kind of grasping at something, mm. which I think is, in that sense... Failure is the best option. I don't ever want to figure out what I'm capable of. But you can never figure out what you're capable of. So then that, that's a failure. If that's what the goal is, but then that means that failure is okay. Failure mm. is constructive. Failure is mm. actually the, the beginning of the path of understanding. So that's how we, we, like, that's how we do it. We fail mm. over and over and over again. Oh, right. Okay. 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 Yeah. 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 So, sorry. I was thinking about failure in a completely different way right then. Yeah. That's so weird. Like, I've failure like existed in like a completely different way in my mind. Okay. Okay. Sorry. For some reason, uh, that's so weird. Okay. So, failure. Am I scared of failure? No. I'm not in the same way because I fail all the fucking time. Mm. Like, all the time. And there's, there's, there's a lot of artists who have had to learn this industry the hard way. And unfortunately, I'm all fortunately, I'm one of them. Like, if there's anyone that's been, like, dragged through this industry backwards, had bad management, had bad people on the team, had bad lawyer, legal representation, and I, I am that person. I've had so much money spent unfortunately, and it's put me in bad situations over and over again. And that would be seen as a failure, like a failure, and then again a failure, and then a failure, a failure for me to recognize what's happening as well. But would I change any of it? No, I wouldn't, because it's made me learn so much. Every time that something happens that is perceived a failure or feels like a failure in the moment, what it makes you do is it makes you reevaluate what success is, what's important to you, and where you want to be. And that's kind of a gift, mm. right? Because it makes you grow. It's polish. Yeah. It's like, it's kind of like plant food in a way. Mm. It's like when, when things Sunlight. are tough. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's like when things are really tough. Like, I think we forget through those times of like things feeling like stagnant and like, hard and painful like what's actually happening there is our growth is like that is happening is like not visible but it's after those times when we're going again and you're like fuck that feels like so far away now because I've I've grown as such a person so when we're talking about failure in that way like absolutely not like if I have a bad gig and I feel like it's a complete failure I can guarantee the next gig is going to be 20 times better because I'm going to have learned what not to do mm. from that gig, right? But, you know, it ages you. I've got loads of wrinkles now. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. I do. I love, um, I love the realisation that if you're not failing, it probably means you're not taking risks. And, you, it, and if you're not failing, it probably means you're not challenging yourself. 100%. And if you're not challenging yourself, you have to ask why. If you don't know how to... Yeah, exactly. If you're not, if you're not failing, you're not challenging... That's totally it. You're really not pushing the boundaries, are you? Because you're, like, so scared of that that you're just, like, not even going there. And you really actually only know what success looks like by failing mm. and getting up again and getting up again. You know, South by Southwest just cancelled and I lost all that money. I would text my TM and was like, oh, you won't believe it. I've just, like, lost 5K overnight. And he was like, if anyone can get up and keep going, it's you. Like, you're the, you know, you've got the strength. And, like, I do think that it's, like, I'm, like, incredibly resilient mm. when it comes to failure now. And unfortunately, it's because, well, fortunately, it's because I've had to deal with quite a lot of failure in, in the industry. 
But like musically, I'd say like it's still pretty sacred in terms of like, you know, I don't really feel like failure exists when it comes to like making music and that's why it's such a sacred thing. Mm. Not even if you're doing a vocal take and you don't, you don't ever feel like, nah, I didn't get that right. Yeah, of course, but it's not a failure. You just mm. didn't get it right. Like, I feel like or if you sit this idea of perfectionism is like the the absolute antithesis to creativity. What about if you sit at the computer and get nothing done all day? Like, yeah, it can feel like a failure, but it's not. You would have got something done. It's like all the stuff that you can't see is when it comes to when it comes to being creative. I honestly don't think that there's really anything wrong you can do as long as you're like trying Mm. Dave taught me that Dave Akumu he said like even if you're doing nothing all day and lying in bed and watching Netflix or whatever you'll be getting something from that like creativity isn't like a one dimensional thing even if it's frustration of yeah. when you wake up the next day, like, I did nothing yesterday. I'm a, I'm a piece of shit. I need to do something with my life today. The song that you write that day will be very different from had it had you not done that, you know? Yep. I do think that. I think that it's really important that we're, like, we're kind to ourselves. And, yeah, I just think, like, it's it's like a totally movable, movable thing, basically. Well, despite all the fuckeries of the industry and despite all of the potholes you felt like you've fallen down, you're still here, you're still going, you're still incredible, the work's still pure, and you've still given me a beautiful conversation, which I'm extremely grateful for. Thanks for having me. Well, we'll reconvene in like four years and we'll we'll do it again and we'll see what's changed. You might have a baby and you might have packed packed the industry in and just recording songs at home with the kids and the husband. Do you know what though? I hope not. Isn't it funny how like in that moment, in this moment I say that and as soon as I say like, oh, I'll just have a baby to get out of it. my, My partner always reminds me like, you would not, it's not the way out. Like, You don't want a way out, really. Mummy, why did you have me? Well, I needed a get out plan. (laughs) This industry. (laughs) I needed a get out of jail card. Okay, thanks, (laughs) mum. Now what? (laughs) Exactly. Oh, God. Thank you for having me, Thank you for coming. Thank you. Oh, wow, that was a long one.